she grabbed my hand and she pulled me close to her, very, very close. And she looked me in the eyes and with her little crooked finger, she did this and she said, never forget. Hi, my name is Debbie Herbeck and this is Ascension Presents. About 34 years ago, I was a young mother. I had a two-year-old and a six-month-old and I was drowning. I felt very hidden, very isolated, very alone. Um, the things I did every day, I did, and then they quickly got undone. There wasn't a lot of gratitude for what I was doing. And I honestly would come before the Lord and say, is what I'm doing really make a difference? Does it really matter? So I remember one day, Peter came home and he was really excited. We were both working in ministry at the time. And he said, we just got invited to speak at this conference in Germany on the family. He said, do you want to go? And I was super excited to go. I hadn't been with grown-ups in a while. I hadn't worn nice clothes. I hadn't really been doing ministry. And so I was very excited to go. And so we were able to leave my daughter, Sarah, with my parents. And we took Michael with us. He was six months old and he was nursing. And we got on a plane for a very short trip to Germany. As soon as we got on the plane, I just thought, oh, this is going to be a challenging trip. Michael, I think, cried almost the whole way to Germany. They had lost our luggage. And when it finally arrived, 24 hours later, the suitcases had been broken into, and all my jewelry, jewelry was stolen. And the baby food jars, I don't know if some of you remember this, is, this ages me a bit, they were glass. I don't know why I brought glass jars, and they had smashed all over my nice outfits that I was going to wear to present. But here's the kicker. A few minutes after that, one of the conference organizers came to us and said, we are so sorry, but we've overbooked our speakers, and we only have room for one of you to speak. And so, as you can probably guess, my husband Peter was the one who spoke, and I was really, I was so happy for him. He did a great job. He got a standing ovation from, you know, people in Germany. They loved his message, and I was very, very happy for him. But that night when I went to bed, as I just laid this before the Lord and was crying, and I just said, God, why did you bring me here? This has been really, really challenging. And I thought things were going to be different, but I feel so discouraged. And so the next day was the last day of the conference. And I was so kind of absorbed in kind of my own stuff that I hadn't even looked at the program to see who the keynote speaker was going to be. And so we walked into this huge hall in this very old, quaint building. And on the poster in the, in the hallway was the keynote speaker. And it was a large picture of Mother Teresa of Calcutta. And I was like, whoa, this is amazing. And so they began to lead us up to our seats. I had Michael in my arms. And as we were walking up the steps, one of the conference workers tapped me on the shoulder, tapped me on the shoulder and said, excuse me, Mother Teresa is looking for 10 mothers with babies to sit on the stage with her. So I began to follow this woman and Peter was like, where are you going? And I was like, I'm going to sit with Mother Teresa. So he went up to his VIP seats in the balcony and I went on the stage with Mother Teresa and I was probably like five or six feet away from her. And I could see every detail, her, her sweater that she wore. Some of us are very familiar with that great little gray sweater with the torn cuffs and her hands clasping the rosary. And I'll never forget, she talked about the value and the dignity of every human life, born and unborn. And she said, the first one to ever greet Jesus was John the Baptist in the womb. And she just, her, her talk was amazing. And the miraculous thing was every single baby on that stage was quiet. You could have heard a pin drop. And I thought, well, this was really good. This is really cool. I can't wait to tell people that I heard Mother Teresa speak. And as I was leaving to go off the stage, the same conference worker said, don't go. Mother Teresa wants to meet individually every single woman who was on that stage with her. And before I knew it, I was standing before Mother Teresa. And I leaned into her, and the first thing she did was she pressed a miraculous medal in my palm, which, if you know anything about Mother Teresa, was her calling card to everyone she met. And then she traced the sign of the cross on my son Michael's forehead. And then she just clasped my hands, and I just said, Mother, it's so good to meet you. And I turned to go. And as I turned to go, she grabbed my hand, and she pulled me close to her, very, very close. And she looked me in the eyes, and with her little crooked finger, she did this. And she said, never forget. 
that your job as a mother is the most important job in the whole world. And in that moment, it was like I knew exactly why God had brought me to Germany. He brought me there to hear a word in my heart that I couldn't hear in my own kitchen. I couldn't hear from my husband to tell me that what I was doing was of the ultimate value and importance. And to hear it from Mother Teresa just meant so much. I went home and I began to read and devour everything about Mother Teresa, everything that she wrote. And what I want to say here in this beautiful, miraculous way is, you know how they say, we don't find saints, they found us? She found me. And she began to teach me what true love, what authentic love looks like. And so what I want to leave you with and encourage you is some practical tips about how we can love. Love is the simplest, most difficult thing that we are called to do. And so I think it's good to not just think about love as this this kind of ambiguous or abstract word, but how can we love practically in each of our days? First one, learn to listen well. This is really difficult, but it's so meaningful. Every single person wants to know they are seen and known and loved. Learn to listen well. If you're a good listener, learn to listen better. The second one, speak words that bring life. And when you need to speak words that are difficult, speak those words, speak the truth in love. The third one, be a credible witness to God's love. Don't just talk the talk, but walk the walk. This is how we communicate God's love. This is how we love others. The fourth one, keep your promises. In a world today where people don't keep their promises, people feel so loved when you keep your promises. I work work with teenage girls, and it means a lot to them when you say you're going to call or you're going to show up or you're going to be there to keep your promises says you are important, you matter. The fifth one, and this was big in Mother Teresa, For Mother Teresa, smile a lot, smile often. A smile can change the whole world. It can change how other people view you and think you view them. The sixth one, remember people's names. Some people are better at this than others. People feel incredibly loved when you can call them by name and you remember them by name. Number seven, be interruptible. Make time even when you don't have time for other people. In the busyness of life, say to somebody, you matter. I'm slowing down my life to make time for you. Number eight, pray often. Pray earnestly and sincerely. How often do we say, I'll pray for you, and then we never do. If you're going to pray for somebody, if you say you will, do it. Pray for somebody. Number nine, love sincerely and selflessly and humbly from your heart. Do it with good intention. And finally, this is not an exhaustive list, but finally, Let go of bitterness, resentment, jealousy, and envy, and learn how to forgive. Forgiveness is what frees us to be able to love as Christ loved. God bless you.